And here we go. Rehearsal. Tuck in. Clear back. Here Listen, we go. hold on. We're not going to compromise our visual style because of a monsoon. We're going to get the shot. We're going to get the shot. Marl, Mitch. Somebody say action. Action. lose sight of the fact that we have to make a movie that is emotionally involving and that has characters that are, that are deeply involving because at the end of the day all of your little camera techniques and all of these explosions and Mal over there doing God knows watering a bunch of dirt it doesn't matter you understand it's about human beings you understand what I'm saying it's about human involvement and, and, and pathos and, and, and human psychology so what I'm going to try and do is we're going to create a scene of movement where human beings are moving through the scene. So what I'm thinking is, Garner's moving, and she's going to see the blood all over that vehicle there, where a human life is lost. That one? And she's going to be talking, and Flurry's going to kind of be moving. And I want all this carnage all around me. We're surrounded by carnage, you understand? Utter carnage. I want to feel the hatred of the act. And Cooper is going to be maneuvering, and Cooper's going to find this detonator, and he's going to pick it up, and we're going to have to see that detonator. And then he's going to move Thank by you. Flurry, and he's going to hand the fucking thing to Flurry. Holy shit. Okay, okay, easy. Can I, can I just take him aside for a second? Uh, I drank a fucking Red Bull. I've never had a Red Bull before. I've never had one. The original idea for the film came when I read something about an attack that had occurred at a place called the Kobar Towers, which were a Western housing facility in Saudi Arabia. And I remember reading about the FBI uh, trying to get a team on site in Saudi Arabia to investigate and having a lot of trouble. Colonel Ghazi, Special Agent Ronald Flurry, Special Agent Mays, Special Agent Sykes, Special Agent Levy. And I started thinking that it would be fascinating to watch these agents try and do their jobs. Basically then, Michael Mann's office is right down the hall from mine. I walked into his office one day and I said, wouldn't it be great to do a, some kind of a pr homicide procedural investigation, except you're doing it in the most hostile of circumstances. You're doing it in Saudi Arabia, you're doing it in Riyadh, and they don't want you there. And he kind of looked away for a second and said, yeah. And the three of us got in a room and came up with this idea of let's see kind of the anatomy of this investigation following a crime that literally has happened in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and in May 2003, three Western housing complexes in Saudi Arabia were attacked in the same night. From that kind of seed and from those pictures, that kind of informed the script. And action. Number so far, 100 dead, 200 injured. Target was a softball game. Rumor is killers wore Saudi police uniforms. Special Special Agent Fran Manor was killed. Uh, after reading it, you feel for the characters. And you feel for the fact that this agent flurry who loses his best friend in one of the bombings. And the thing is, is that when you watch CNN and you watch how many people have lost their lives, you feel for it, but you really don't get a chance to really understand it until it happens to you. So that's what's interesting about it right there, is the fact that death has been brought uh, to his doorstep, and now how does he deal with it? Grant, take a stab at the bomb side. Uh, from the craters, Looks like they used a high explosive, possibly military grade. When you're dealing with something that's current events, you know, and when you're dealing with institutions like the FBI that people know, um, and the government of Saudi Arabia and the people of Saudi Arabia, uh, your obligation is to be as authentic as you possibly can. Michael, Pete, and I all agreed early on that let's just make sure everything looks, sounds, and feels as though it could really be occurring. This whole is the case. Your men are contaminating this. Do you understand evidence and little things that are clues? Unfortunately, in America, I think we know so little beyond our own shores. And if I can find a project that's a little informative and as immediate as this piece is, that's a piece I like to spend my energies doing. 
Pete Berg came over to my house. He basically said, oh, you have to do this movie with me. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be really cool. And the script was so compelling, and, and I liked the role. And especially getting the chance to work with Pete, Jamie, and with Chris Cooper, and and even Mr. Bateman. Well, we do this kind of stuff all the time on Arrested Development, you know. <laughs> Stuff's blowing up, flying around. So this is a little boring for me. Um, what I'd like to do is a fire gag, um, somewhere where my hair catches on fire. That's really the only thing that gets me up in the morning. Oh! Well, when I first read this script, it was big, action-packed, sort of scary in political intrigue and all that kind of stuff that, you know, these are not scripts that I'm asked to be a part of, so... I was very eager to be a part of it and did some rain dances and and here I am. So uh, I'm you know I'm just trying to keep my head down and make sure people don't know I'm here because if I'm if, if I'm seen here they might you know, what is he doing in this movie? I'm going out looking a little for about, uh, for you. We look a little a beat one beat. Yeah, I look at your eyes and then I hear it. Okay. Yeah. The first I was in my home in uh, Palestine, Israel. And someone called me to meet Pete, the director, and then I uh, took the script and read it. I felt after that that, yeah, I'm starting being involved and exciting for this script because I felt the attitude was trying to bring uh, harmony or to put focus on, on something important. Can you come up with some funny stuff? No, it's not. It's not funny. It's not funny. I'm calling our director, Pete Berg. Let's see if this works. I hope it does. Um, I approached Pete at a Japanese restaurant um, about this role. And I think he felt sorry for me. And he gave in and cast me. Um, I don't think there was anyone left. I think he had gone through his list. And uh, he was at the, you know, his wit's end and they had to start shooting. So. Um. Oh my God! That's not too much trouble. Oh, it's, it's too much trouble, P. Yeah. Pa -ta -pa 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 -pa. You page this person. Mm. Press five now. Oh my God! So embarrassing. Fire the hole! Fire the hole! <laughs> The first part of the rehearsal process, the FBI was extremely cooperative. They invited us out to a bomb-making school that, where they bring um, police and FBI agents from all over the country and they show them how to make bombs and it's basically bomb school. For anybody who watches TV, where have you seen one of these before? Wiley Coyote. Wiley Coyote, right? <laughs> this is called a 100 cap blasting machine. You pull it up and if you listen... It has a little motor in there, a little electric motor. How much power does it take to set off a blasting cap? 0.5 amps, almost nothing, 9 volt battery kind of stuff. The bomb stuff was, was crazy because when you see, for one, how small the bomb can be, but how relentless it can be when, when it goes off. Fire and all! You know, you can never imagine being in a place, a coffee shop, or wherever it is, and to have that go off right next to you. Learned so much. We got to hang out with the real versions of ourselves. There's a pipe. There's a pipe bomb in here. We just blew stuff up and we hung out with the FBI agents as they were learning to sift through all of the debris and figure out okay, was this a high explosive? Was it a low explosive? Was it hot fuse, an electric fuse, if it was detonated by remote control? Or with a uh, blasting cap. Yeah, what's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the zero um, delay. Right, exactly. Made by Master Dead Corporation, zero milliseconds, which means no delay. So the second you put power to it, this cap goes. It was very important to know how to deal with uh, uh, crime, like uh, bombing. Uh, what what you're looking for as an, an uh, investigator. Organization at post blast are really, really important. Most people would imagine, well, everything's destroyed. But as a matter of fact, there's, through concussion, a lot of material is driven down rather than out. So there's a lot of evidence at an explosion site right at the site of explosion.
combat in the film is something that is really, really fucking terrifying for you guys. We want to kind of freak you all out a little bit. So with the help of Harry, we're going to put you in a, a loose combat drill, and then we're going to turn it up a little bit, and then everybody can go home. All right, Harry Humphrey. Hey, guys. Uh, let's talk a little bit about city missions. We wanted to be as authentic as possible, so the cast knew in pre-production that that was Pete's methodology. So they spent time on simple ballistic issues. They spent time out on the gun range learning how to fire. Three! Fire. May, bring the hands down, take a breath. I never uh, used gun before, and I don't know what is gun. Just I, uh, I know the guns in the television. You know, it looks like a toy, but it can kill. Her. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All I really need are these. <laughs> For your piano career. When we first started Alias, it was completely physical. I, I didn't carry a gun really until the second season. So I, I did have to kind of go back to square one and really learn to get as comfortable as Janet would be with a gun and learn how to do it correctly as opposed to um, trying to look cool while you do it. This scenario that we're giving you is similar to the scenario at the end of the film and this is him. The mission has to do with getting one of your own out before he's killed and we're going to try and traumatize you and put you through as much audio and visual and projectile chaos as we possibly can. But Jamie, this is your call. You, you set your guys up the way you think they should be set up. Right. You tell them what to do. do. You know, they taught us a few things on how we would enter a room, how we would secure an area and things like that. And so it was definitely helpful. It's just like an episode of Cops, right? Yeah, yeah. you just come in, you fucking, it's this. It's gonna be all right. We can't hear each other. We're gonna use a lot of hand signal. I know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right. On the left, me and you up front, you right behind me. They did this whole thing where they were like, you know, <laughs> hiding behind, you know, stuff. And they just told us, you know, how would you get from point A to point B without getting shot? And it was, it was not happening. Now these paint pellets, when they hit you, they sting so that it really pumped up your adrenaline. When you were hit, it stung, you got angry. Cause they were shooting us everywhere, on the back of our ass, and back of your head, and everything. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh my God. Forget about it. I got lit up. I got you. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I saw you. I saw you. I timed it. I saw you run in the back. So, and, and then you stop to think, so, wow, if this was really bullets, I'd be dead right now. So it teaches you to be more alert. Uh, it taught us to really respect, you know, the weapons that we were using and everything like that and know that they really can kill. I think it was good, you know. I think it was about experiencing the confusion if you're unfortunate enough to be in a close quarters combat situation, you know, and just reloading a weapon or assuming that your weapon's going to work is, is just not accurate. So it was an interesting lesson. Interesting, right? No, what it is is that the panic. Panic, when right? You can't... It ain't nothing, and I yelled out, somebody give me a weapon, and they give me the weapon like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Good so, day, man. I thought, see you in the morning, see right? Good job, man. Good job. Yeah, we there. ambushed him from behind. Somebody <laughs> shot his ass up, and he didn't know they were... My whole ass is ripped off. <laughs> the both of us went back on television. <laughs> Explored violence like we do in the kingdom. Um, so these are these are kind of new themes for me. My goal was to take the audience into something that we read about every day in the newspaper and sort of take the audience into these experiences and to create a film that is really entertaining and thrilling and engaging. 
but also happens to reflect the time that, that we lived in. But I do try and um, maintain as much of a um, sense of authenticity as I can, print as much research as I can, and aspiring to be accurate. And because of that, there's extra responsibility. Pete and Michael came, and their first comment was, we've got this movie, here's the general storyline, we want to film in Saudi Arabia. It's said of al Sawadi that al-Qaeda recruits from the storefronts there, and that's not an exaggeration. The risk level is such, there was no way that this production was going to get anything done in Sawadi. So Arizona doubling for Riyadh and Abu Dhabi doubling for Riyadh are almost inseparable. But when you see the set in Arizona, Every detail is there. It's absolutely brilliant. And Tom Duffield is a genius. Well, we're, we're in uh, Mesa, Arizona, but it's supposed to be Sawadi or the, uh, an area of Riyadh that sort of looks like this. Everything here is based on a building in either Riyadh or uh, Jeddah. It's very hard to get photo research from Saudi Arabia because they don't really like pictures taken in, in public there. So uh, it's really the hardest movie I've ever had to deal with as far as getting photo research of buildings, people, interiors. So a lot of this is based on pictures that our director took when he was visiting over there, and uh, some I've been able to, to glean off the internet. Everybody, everybody, guys, fantastic, fantastic work, fantastic work. Thank you. This is going to be one of the first technical movies right representing the Middle Eastern culture. And uh, coming over here gave me this little feeling of being back home, looking at the buildings, uh, windows, uh, satellite dishes on top of the roof, uh, the signs. Uh, it can't get realer than this. It's, um, it looks a little bit like some northern parts of the San Fernando Valley. I figure we could have shot there. Would have been a little bit easier on uh, on our whole travel schedule. Yeah, guys, but the car, ben Ice could have been could have been great. She's a director. She's a the sets have been amazing. They didn't not spend a lot of money on this movie. Um, they uh, they're spending it all over the place, um, spraying it as it were, and uh, they have built themselves a town. And we've built this thing because we've got to, you know, we've got to blow it up. Go! We've got explosions. We've got RPGs. We got gunfire. And it just gives us control. It gives us an opportunity to kind of be able to rig everything and do everything appropriately, which would have been, you know, next to impossible on a real street in the Middle East. He went to the left. Hand. He went to the left. Hand. You're gonna lose him. Do not fucking lose him. Take him back. So when they come flying around, it's like, whoa, we're in a bad neighborhood. No, no, it's sweet. This is not good area. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be here. The look at the film has its own style and energy, which sort of set the tone for everything we were doing. Phil Nielsen, our second unit director, is a mad poet genius, uh, marine philosopher, and uh, he really understands the level of intensity that we want to the action, the realism that we want to the action. Flurry sees the ass end of the Suburban. Suburban to the right. Mercedes, Mercedes straight ahead. You see the Mercedes, doors open, blood trail. We're in it, we're in it, we're in it. You're lurking, flurry, boom. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Trail Suburban, now boom. Burka Woman and Sykes from the back. RPG. Reverse, reverse! Move, 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 Misses. Boom. All the glass shot. Then there's a low. Ah. Uh, then we hear. Boom. He smashes the windshield down. Swats it out. Cover! This car explodes. We cover them. And they get ducking. He wanted it high impact, dramatic, quick, fast, realistic. And that's what we tried to give him. trying to figure out how could we do this to make it like you've seen on the news and you can meld it into safe explosions that can be done around crew and still get the same effect. He was ecstatic, yeah. 
Holy smokes. That's always nice when he gets excited. He says good things then. You know, it's it's a complete team effort. Without Bert Dalton and Phil Nielsen and, and their crews, we would certainly uh, uh, not have a chance of, of achieving any of it. So I'm fortunate to, to have really dedicated, good people that, that care and are, you know, work their butts off to, to help me, you know, achieve my vision. Came at him like a pack of wild dogs. Ali, Woo! Ali. Come on. anymore, Toto. It, it, it was important for us to be able to come to the Middle East. The film is about cooperation between American law enforcement and uh, Middle Eastern law enforcement. And uh, we felt that it was really important to come and to experience the culture. And it was it was great to be there and to get that sense of, of the authenticity of the Middle East. And we were, we were really well taken care of there. And the heat was just insane. Do they sell Gatorade in uh, Abu Dhabi? Does anyone know? I'm a person that just is addicted to sweating. I love to sweat and get all the toxins out, but that was a whole nother level of heat. Oh yeah, we're in Abu Dhabi for sure. We're in the Middle East. That temperature's about 115. God loved them in Abu Dhabi. We left hell in terms of temperature in Arizona. God love Arizona. We had a great time filming there. Got on a plane, flew to Abu Dhabi, expecting it to be much cooler, and it was hotter and it was humid. I would, I would fucking kill for a Gatorade right now. And that, that was rough. Abu Dhabi, it was crazy. But it looked good. The palace was hot. You know what I'm saying? They picked us up in some phantoms, and man, there's a lot of money over there. You know, a lot of money and a lot of security. The guests here, all right? Whatever they offer you, you take. Whatever you date, yeah. you're gonna have so many dates, you're gonna make a big boy poo poo. You ready for that? Strap a diaper on you, baby. Let's go. Take that phone off. No, I put it on vibrate. Put it in your ass. Wait, wait. Put it in your ass. Okay. Uh, right now, we are in the um, the Emirates Palace in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, which is in the Middle East, I think. It, this could be Caesars, though. It's as hot as Vegas. We, we really might be on the Strip. I gotta get out. And today, I think it was up to 109. That's been the same case uh, where we've shot most of the film in, in Mesa, Arizona. That has been the biggest challenge of this film, is dealing with the heat. Uh, are you okay? And we've had some folks that have had to take a little trip to the hospital or they've been so active in fight scenes they've <laughs> they've had upset stomachs. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been more physical than any role I've ever played, which is not saying a great deal. <laughs> When they pull me out of the overturned SUV on the highway, um, it was on a particularly warm day, and I got a little overtaxed, and I, you know, I just threw up all over the place. It was, it was awful. I got to run in my pantyhose and, and my vagina cramped. It was, you know, it was not a good day for me. And he was like, "Look at you, <laughs> suture." But it was. Um, that's when it was real. This, right? This is a good shot, too. Okay. You're gonna just kind of move it, and you're ready, right? I like this. See, you know, and you might even get a few shots off, and that's when he's gonna fucking get hit. Stay down, 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 stay down, stay down, stay down. I tend to like a more naturalistic style of filmmaking. I like to shoot three cameras. Again, one more time, you guys. I don't like to use marks. I like to use handheld cameras. I like um, a pretty organic style of filmmaking. At least that's how we go about shooting it. All right, you see him? Okay, start fighting. Just tugging. Everybody fighting. Hold on to him, man. Hey, 
I like improvisation. I like the actors to feel loose. I like to try and discover things kind of in the moment. Al Jazeera is going to play up the fact that there's an FBI presence, and we're going to play up the fact that there's a tie to terror. Check me. Oh, oh, I know, I know. Put it down. Put it down. Is it yours? Just put it down. It's not yours. Bad guy. All right, it's Chip Pacino from Scarface. All right. <laughs> I just, you know, I have to humor you, Pete. Yeah, I know, my bad. So All right, just, just somewhere in between? No, just do one just a player film. Like okay. a 4.6? Yeah, yeah, and action. Checkmate. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Put it down. You got it. The three camera approach, it's actually something Peter talked to me about right uh, in the beginning of the film. Uh, it's sort of capturing the instinctual part of the drama. He didn't like choreographed things and he liked to block the scenes with the actors and basically roll the cameras. And that was really interesting because now the operator has become an essential part of the visual storytelling of the film. And I think the handheld kind of um, filmmaking is something that always puts you there. It's more kind of documentary style, so it makes you feel like you're actually involved in the storytelling a little bit more. Yeah, the whole movie's handheld. Not just, all of it, we just had a fucking techno crane out here. <laughs> yeah, we did. For one shot, I hope it's gonna be in the movie. Hope it. <laughs> we immediately swapped it out for a man on a ladder. <laughs> it's, it's really a good experience for me, and to work with Pete, you know, he's a, he have a spirit of actor, and that's why I think he know what's going on in my mind as an actor, and he know very well what, what I feel that moment. When I see Peace Method, I'm admiring of it. You know, I say, that's really great, you know. How do you do that? And particularly, he has an actor's intuitive grasp of content to the scene. And Pete does sort of keep things kind of quick and kind of fresh, and, and uh, everybody's kind of on their toes. And it's not stagnant at all. You know, there's three cameras going at all times, and the takes are nice and long. It's really like a pioneer way of shooting it, because, you know, he just keeps going. One more time, Jamie. When he says, I'm going, he, when he points, look over there. Take Left, a look. Oh, to look the right. over that shoulder. Yeah, yeah, and listen, look there, and then come back listen, at him strong. Say, who's in charge? Yeah. Who is running the investigation? General Abdel Malik. He's Abdel given Malik. us permission to walk through the ground. لقينا عندك ست بدل زيادة على البدل المخصصة لك. هذه جريمة أنت عارف بالذات المهاجمين كانوا لابسين بدلكم. أنا هرق. أحتاج بدل زيادة عشان أغير خلال الث... خيار الدوام شوف قبصاني آخر هم يعرقك لو سمحت To have Ashraf and Ali is a real blessing for us and when people see the, the kind of soul and the kind of um, really complex emotional acting these guys bring it's going to just add a whole new whole new dimension so thank you for coming and uh, I hope your first American film is a pleasurable experience. Scene 69, uh, take four. Go out! Scene 69, take four. Go out! Take four. See Mark! Mustafa Malik Fahad, Tamam. The ambulance was stolen from King Fahad Hospital last Wednesday, three days before the bombing. You have to say to Ali and Ashraf, hats off to them because English is not their first language. And, you know, they were always trying to figure out not just how to say the words, but what's the nuance, what's the real way to say it. I got 20 men that had rotated shift on the stolen ambulance. One of them now is in our interest. Wow. His name is Ma'ad Al Abdullah. So what you got? So it was a lot of hard work for them in order to really nail the English speaking parts of it. So, and then, you know, uh, they're just great actors, you know, and then watch them uh, do their thing. Get your John Wayne, get your John Wayne on. Well, I ought to, yeah. What is that? Hey, camera mark. Gun with uh, We're rolling, guys, we're rolling. Uh, your left so and it was a lot of fun too, you know, a lot of fun, it was kind of, you know, cracking jokes and stuff, and so it was good to see that. Security, let's get him. <laughs> it was the best. He's just swimming in the tidal basin right now. <laughs> How are you, big man? They showed up on days they didn't shoot because they were so happy to be part of the movie, which just was infectious, you know, and for, for Ashraf, you know, the movie was the first time he came to America. 
Um, so it was also just kind of fun to watch him walk over to the Capitol building when we were in D.C. and kind of see it for the first time. We're at uh, Capitol, Washington. <clears throat> this is my third time here. I uh, came here uh, before. We have another month and we finish here four days. Ali and Ashraf have a lot of things to talk about. I'm always asking them about their their country and their politics and, and what do they think of America, you know. So, he's sleeping here, work, uh, working here, yeah? The president. Not much work. No, not much work. Oh, uh, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> Roxy, and me now, it's for, for the filming, yalla. Let's do it. Anime now? Yeah. You don't know what the anime 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 now? Yeah, anime yeah. Now is. I've heard that word yeah. for the yeah. last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like uh, uh, when I want to do for you because I love you so much, Chris. I want to do you. Uh, just a moment. Anime now. <laughs> <laughs> the load is extra heavy for Ali and Ashraf when they're expected to <laughs> improvise are, are out of the blue. Peter says, okay, say this, 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 and this, you know, during the scene. As a that kid, say your own vest. Jamie, say, excuse me like you don't understand them. Then say, bulletproof vest. Action. You have your own vests? Excuse me. Vests, you know, for the bullets. We brought Still. them, yes. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So is your first name Colonel? What? Your first name. What's your first name? Faris. Faris. Yeah. Officer Faris. The film is, in, 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 in a sense, a buddy film about these two people who, who come together and are very suspicious of each other and don't understand each other and, and, and uh, end up having a, a, a real legitimate affinity and respect about this friendship. I have two daughters and a son, beautiful son, and I find myself in a place where I no longer care about why we are attacked. I only care that 100 people woke up a few mornings ago had no idea it was their last. They're both cops, basically. A cop in Saudi Arabia and a cop in Washington, D.C., they want the same thing. They want to protect and serve. And that they may have cultural differences and political differences, but at the end of the day, they're the same guy. They want a better life for their families, and they want to catch the bad guy. I love you, too. All right, bye. The whole idea was to take political issues, global issues, regional issues, and don't look at them from 30,000 feet. Look at them from within the human experience. I think it is a realistic action movie. I think it is taking events that we hear about on the news more than we'd like to and kind of showing how they play out and how violent they can get. We want to know what that thing is. Your, your, your senses are telling you that there's some value to these I was attracted to this because it does make an effort to go a little deeper. Things aren't just black and white. Fire the hole and action! The way you describe this film is that it is the, the most real look at that situation. It's, it, it's one of those, like, I cannot believe this is happening. It really, like, it takes your breath away. And I think that's what's beautiful about the movie is that he doesn't shy away from that. He doesn't cut any corners or anything like that. It's very, um, as real as he could get it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> there will be something taken away from us, some type of lessons and stories, right? And, and um, you know, we are in a situation, and I feel that this, the situation that we're in will pass, but it's going to get a lot tougher before it, before it does pass. And hopefully this movie gives people some type of insight.
on it because you possibly can. Michael, Pete, and I all agreed early on that let's just make sure everything looks, sounds, and feels as though it could really be occurring. This hole is the case. Your men are contaminating this. Do you understand evidence? And little things that are clues. Unfortunately, in America, I think we know so little beyond our own shores. And if I can find a project that's a little informative and as immediate as this piece is, that's a piece I like to spend my energies doing. Pete Berg came over to my house. He basically said, oh, you have to do this movie with me. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be really cool. And the script was so compelling, and, and I liked the role, and especially getting the chance to work with Pete, Jamie, and with Chris Cooper, and, and even Mr. Bateman. Well, we do this kind of stuff all the time on Arrested Development, you know. <laughs> Stuff's blowing up, flying around. So this is a little boring for me. Um, what I'd like to do is a fire gag, um, somewhere where my hair catches on fire. That's really the well, when I first read this script, it was big, action-packed, sort of scary and political intrigue and all that kind of stuff that, you know, these are not scripts that I'm asked to be a part of. So I was very eager to be a part of it and did some rain dances and... And here I am. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to keep my head down and make sure people don't know I'm here. Because if I'm if if I'm seen here, they might. Uh, what is he doing in this movie? I'm going out, looking a little for about, uh, for you. We look a little, a beat, one beat. Yeah. I look at your eyes and then I hear it. Okay. Yeah. The first. I was in my home, in uh, Palestine, Israel, and someone called me to meet Pete, the director, and then I uh, took the script and read it. I felt after that that, yeah, I'm starting being involved and exciting for this script because I felt the attitude was trying to bring uh, harmony or to put focus on, on something important. Did you come up with some funny stuff? No, it's not. It's not funny. All funny. I'm calling our director, Pete Berg. Let's see if this works. I hope it does. Um, I approached Pete at a Japanese restaurant um, about this role and I think he felt sorry for me and he gave in and cast me um, I don't think there was anyone left I think he had gone through his list and uh, he was at the you know, his wit's end and they had to start shooting so. um, I, I would appreciate if you would leave me a phone number because I might not have it oh my god I am the fucking thing that's starting Okay, okay, easy. Can I, can I just take him aside for a second? Uh, come I drank on, a down. fucking Red Bull. I've never had a Red Bull before. I've never had one. The original idea for the film came when I read something about an attack that had occurred at a place called the Kobar Towers, which were a Western housing facility in Saudi Arabia. And I remember reading about the FBI uh, trying to get a team on site in Saudi Arabia to investigate and having a lot of trouble. Colonel Ghazi, Special Agent Rama Florida, Special Agent Mays, Special Agent Sykes, Special Agent Levy. And I started thinking that it would be fascinating to watch these agents try and do their jobs. Basically then, Michael Mann's office is right down the hall from mine. I walked into his office one day and I said, wouldn't it be great to do a some kind of a homicide procedural investigation, except you're doing it in the most hostile of circumstances. You're doing it in Saudi Arabia, you're doing it in Riyadh, and they don't want you there. And he kind of looked away for a second and said, yeah. And the three of us got in a room and came up with this idea of let's see kind of the anatomy of this investigation following a crime that literally has happened in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> In May 2003, three Western housing complexes in Saudi Arabia were attacked in the same night. From that kind of seed and from those pictures, that kind of informed the script. And action. Number so far, 100 dead, 200 injured. Target was a softball game. Rumor is killers wore Saudi police uniforms. Special. Special Agent Fran Manor was killed. Oh, no. uh, after reading it, you feel for the characters. You feel for the fact that this agent, Flurry, 
who loses his best friend in one of the bombings. And the thing is, is that when you watch CNN and you watch how many people have lost their lives, you feel for it, but you really don't get a chance to really understand it until it happens to you. So that's what's interesting about it right there, is the fact that death has been brought uh, to his doorstep, and now how does he deal with it? Grant, take a stab at the bomb side. Uh, from the craters, Looks like they used a high explosive, possibly military grade. When you're dealing with something that's current events, you know, and when you're dealing with institutions like the FBI that people know, um, and the government of Saudi Arabia and the people of Saudi Arabia, uh, your obligation is to be as authentic. Here we go. Rehearsal. Tuck in. Clear back. Here Listen, we hold on. We're not going to compromise our visual style because of a monsoon. We're going to get the shot. We're going to get the shot. Morrow, Somebody say action. Action. We can't lose sight of the fact that we have to make a movie that is emotionally involving, that has characters that are, that are deeply involving. Because at the end of the day, all of your little camera techniques and all of these explosions, there's a pal over there doing God knows watering a bunch of dirt. It doesn't matter, you understand? It's about human beings. You understand what I'm saying? It's about human involvement and, and, and pathos and, and, and human psychology. So what I'm going to try and do is we're going to create a scene of movement where human beings are moving through the scene. So what I'm thinking is, Garner's moving, and she's going to see the blood all over that vehicle there, where a human life is lost. That one? And she's going to be talking, and Flora's going to kind of be moving. And I want all this carnage all around me. We're surrounded by carnage, you understand? Utter carnage. I want to feel the hatred of the act. And Cooper is going to be maneuvering, and Cooper's going to find this detonator, and he's going to pick it up, and we're going to have to see that detonator. And then he's going to move by Flurry, and he's going to